الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah the sole creator sustainer and cherisher of the universe and may his peace and blessings be upon his last prophet and messenger Muhammad and upon all prophets and messengers who preceded him I greet you all my dear brothers and sisters with the greeting of all of the prophets from Adam to Muhammad peace be upon them all the greeting of peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh which means may the peace blessing and mercy of God Allah be with you all and I wish in the very outset to express two things before we get to heavy stuff. First, my great thanks and appreciation for the Ottawa Muslim Association and for all excellencies who graced us with their presence this evening and to you all for your kind invitation to share a few humble thoughts with you. Secondly, I cannot help also by express my feeling in this kind of gathering with people from various national and religious backgrounds coming together as brothers and sisters. And when I was looking around, one particular verse from the Quran immediately came to mind. The verse appears in chapter 49, it's verse 13. And I just beginning with that by way of introducing the topic. Interesting enough, that verse does not begin by addressing Muslims. It does not say, O oh Muslims, or O oh believers. It says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O oh mankind. That's a very inclusive address from God to humanity through that last scripture, the Quran. And in fact, it's interesting to notice that in the Quran, while sometimes it addresses Muslims, especially when it comes to their particular religious duties like prayer and fasting, there are more than 200 verses in the Quran that begins with the address, O oh mankind, all of you, God is addressing everyone. And that's significant. Then it goes on. It says, we means God, that's royal we. We created you from a single male and a female, or male and female, depending how we translate it. Which actually means that you are all one family. And if you have the same set of parents, then there is a human family, diverse as it may be, but one family. Then it goes on. And we made you into nations and tribes. Why? That you may get to know one another and recognize one another. This is in full consistency with another verse in the Quran in chapter 30, verse 22 which explains why people on earth have different languages and complexion. And it says in the translation of meaning, of the signs of God, the signs of his mercy and wisdom, is the creation of heavens and earth and the diversity of your languages and your complexion. That is a sign of the creation of Allah. My favorite analogy is like a bouquet of flower, where the white flower is beautiful in its own right. So is the yellow, the blue, the pink, and more beautiful are all of them together. And then it establishes finally at the end of that verse, the sole criterion on the basis of which a human being can be a better human being. It says, Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. The most honored of you in the sight of God is the one who is most righteous. Forget about color, language, even faith claims 
because faith claims are to be settled by Allah in the day of judgment. But this is the translation of true faith. I'd like to first make a remark concerning the topic. In order to achieve world peace and mutual understanding, it is not only enough to talk about what is agreeably positive points. I am sure all of you here, in some degree or the other, are already past Islam 101. And initially, even when I thought of the topic dealing with world peace, I had to make some kind of modification even in the last minute as I was thinking and flying in the plane next to me, uh, a brother who lives here in Ottawa, uh, Salim, brother Salim, Jam. And we kept discussing the topic because I was hesitant myself as to whether I should deal also with these broad issues of what does the term Islam come from? How does the concept of peace fused in uh, theological and eschatological terminology in Islam, how the concept of peace is inherent in the objective, the five broad objectives of Islamic law to safeguard faith, life, mind, honor, and wealth, to explain the meaning of jihad and so on and so forth. But then I mentioned to him also that in the last uh, few weeks, I have been following the trend led by some people in the media or other circles who seem to have uh, been promoting antagonism at the time when what we need more is to promote love. We have seen lots of articles, I don't know what is your share here in Ottawa, quoting things from the Qur'an out of context and trying somehow to convince the public that hatred and harassment of Muslims is justified because violence, dominance and imperialism is inherent in the very scriptures of Islam. I know that might be a delicate topic and like I said earlier, it might be a heavier stuff than dealing with the more one-on-one thing that we have heard. But since you've heard that already, I thought it might be beneficial to go a little bit beyond that because world peace and understanding can also be achieved not only positively by presenting the positive things, but by also dispelling misunderstanding and misquotations. To do that, I propose to deal with the following issues first. A brief introduction to the methodology with which we should understand uh, the topic and then move on to classify the most common types of error in understanding and interpreting the Quran, including, by the way, some interpretation by some Muslims. And then move on to um, deal, and that's the heart of the topic, with some of the commonly misquoted, mispresented, or misunderstood verses in the Qur'an. To start with, in the introduction, as some of you might, have, might be able to see on the PowerPoint, it's um, the need for objectivity and honesty when we deal with a topic like that. To me, that translates into, number one, trying to have some sort of control on the issue of emotions. And I address that not only to non-Muslims, but to Muslims as well. Let's not emotional feeling without evidence blind a person from trying to see the truth as truth.